we are back outside my comfort zone again. Yet another project where the ambition outdoes the skill by a thousand. Maybe even three thousand. I love you three thousand. There are things in the sewing world that I excel at. Corsets, tool dresses, ball gowns, and then there are things I don't. This look, whose theme is fairy, falls well into the things I do not excel at category. I'm trying. But this does give me yet another chance to use my laser cutter. Bruh. So you know we got one part that looks good. Well, maybe. I tried to like stack different textured layers on top of each other. More on that later. You do not, in fact, get more on this later. But each layer took forever to cut. Which means I can't leave the room where the laser is, but I can do something else. So I cut the skirt. Now these fairy fantasy skirts are just circle skirts that are squared off. So easy. So clever. And should once again be ironed. This organza is a number one pain in the to work with. The trick is to immediately fray check and roll hem those edges. And for good measure, I bias bound the top as well. Uh, After scrounging around like a little rattle in my fabric stash, I found some partial pieces of this hand beaded sequin mesh fabric. It was at this moment I realized I've actually been hoarding it for no reason because I just love the fabric so much. So it ended up being perfect for the project. I tried to get a little fay thing going with the little twisty pieces on the top, which I knew then I inevitably had to hand sew in. It was at this point that the layers were done, cut, needed to be shaped, and then I went out and painted it. Don't worry, I primed, painted, and put another layer on. And and then came back in and chaotically decided to add another piece, which ended up being these super cute chains. Yes, more hand sewing. Bruh. The last piece was hand sewing. The warbler corset from the bottom to the top. And then for another impulse decision, getting a Versace moment by wrapping chains all around it. This is how she came out. It was a tough one on my brain. I'm not doing this again because I won't remember. Bye. I have two days to cut and sew this ball gown. Bruh. But Sarah, who would do that to you? Me. I would do that to me. In an effort to cure my very long bout of creative burnout, I gave myself a challenge. Two me. days. Cut and sew. Ball gown. I did spend the week leading up to it, finding the perfect pattern and fabric from around my house. And like Schmog, I had everything, including a pair of clearance sheets I don't remember buying, but they were the perfect color for this. So let's go! <laughs> did you know the bed sheets were one of the cheapest ways to make a full-length circle skirt? They are, and the fabric's more comfortable. The more you know. Now I want this bodice to be structured. I'm talking stiff. So we've got the lining, the interlining, the boning, the outer fabric, and then the fashion sequin on top. I mean, we're going for tight, secure, nothing's going anywhere. Will you be able to sit or bend in this? Probably not. But you will look great because I want that bodice point sharp enough to a man. A little goblin hack. Goblin motor. Right? When you're taking the elastic out of your fitted sheet, save it. Elastic ain't cheap. Another little fun tip, iron. Iron your sheet before you cut your circle skirts out of it. Do as I say, not as I do, so to speak. Except for using a serger. You're gonna be that bad boy if you wanna hem this in one day. I wanna hem this in one day. Which was still the longest part of the day. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Is it cheating? If I'm using petticoats I've already made, no. It's called sustainability. Anyway, that's what we're doing. I probably should not have said, oh, it's only five o'clock, I can add some embellishments, but I did. And that pushed this project into the afternoon evening-ish. Into the evening, for sure. But this is how she came out. I love her. She's giving glitz, she's giving glam, she's giving Taylor's version. And I'm never doing this again. Bye. Just when I thought I defeated my summer of creative crack, it strikes again. That's right, creative constipation. That's what happened on this dress. Or maybe the design just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be in my head. Anyway, ball gown town again, Woo! but this time we're going Barbie. Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. In my little goblin box of patterns, I did not have what I was looking for, which means making a new one, which for me is always the hardest part about sewing. Kind of ironic, it's not actually sewing. Bruh. Anyway, back to Pinktopia. I wanted to use a satin because I thought I liked the way satin looked. Turns out, I don't. But hindsight me and video me are two completely separate people, separated by at least 24 hours. I thought it would be cute to do a pink lining with pink boning. Basically, anything that touched this dress was pink. It was at this point I realized I had a lot of pink in my stash. And for someone who doesn't incorporate pink in her own wardrobe at all, Having 50 shades of pink is a little sus. Someone asked me in one of my other videos if store-bought hoop skirts were fine. Saying in my show, store-bought is fine. And for most people, the answer is yes. But if you're over five foot five, consider making one. That way you don't get this weird bubble bottom. The skirt is where I went wrong with this. I went pleated when I should have gone circle. Yet another thing hindsight me loves to point out. I ended up adding a cute little train and a belt because I don't love the straight across look, though tons of people do. Anyway, this is how she turned out. I don't hate it. I don't love it. And I am never doing this again. Bye.